Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose A is a set. Then there is no bijection from A to the power set of A. In fact, we're going to show that there is no surjection from A to the power set of A. Now, to show that, we're going to show, given an arbitrary function from A to the power set of A, that function is not surjected. So let's consider an arbitrary function f from a to the power set of a. From here, we're going to show that f is not surjective. Now to show that f is not surjective, we're trying to show that the range of f is not all of the power set of a. Or in other words, we're going to find a set in the power set of a that does not belong to the range of f. So the idea is we consider the following set. We consider the set of elements x and a such that x is not an element of f of x. And we're going to call this set s. Now of course s is a subset of a and therefore belongs to the power set of a. But the claim is that S does not belong to the range of F. And to show that S does not belong to the range of F, we're trying to show that S is not an output value of the function F. So we're going to show, given an arbitrary element in the domain of F, the output value is not S. So to do that, let's consider an arbitrary element in the domain of F. I'll call it A. From here, we want to show that f of a is not equal to s. And to show that, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either a is an element of f of a, or a is not an element of f of a. And in either case, we're going to show that f of a is not equal to s. Let's first consider the case a is an element of f of a. If a is an element of f of a, well then, a doesn't satisfy this requirement to be an element of s. So a can't be an element of s. But then, since a is an element of f of a, and a is not an element of s, there's no way that f of a and s can be equal to each other. They don't share the same elements. One of them contains a, the other doesn't contain a. And so this completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where a is not an element of f of a. In the case where a is not an element of f of a, well, we have a is an element of a, and a is not an element of f of a. So a satisfies both requirements to be an element of s. But then we again see that f of a and s don't share exactly the same elements. s contains a, while f of a doesn't contain a. So there's no way that f of a and s can be equal to each other. So f of a is not equal to s. And so, we're done. What we see here is, in either case, we have that f of a is not equal to s. And so putting this all together, we see given an arbitrary element a in a, we have that f of a is not equal to s. Since a was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all a in a, f of a is not equal to s. Or in other words, we've shown if we take any element of a and send it into the function f, its output value will not be s. And therefore, s is not an element of the range of f. And so, we have found an element of the power set of a that does not belong to the range of f. And so, the range of f is not all of the power set of a. And that shows that f is not surjective. And now putting this all together, we have shown given an arbitrary function f from a to the power set of a, it follows that f is not surjective. Since f was arbitrary, this means we have shown every function from a to the power set of a is not surjective and therefore not bijective.
and so there is no bijection from a to the power set of f. And so this completes the proof. Now, of course, there does exist an injective function from a to the power set of a. We just map each element of a to its singleton set. That will be an injective function from a to the power set of a. And the symbols that we could use to say that there exists an injective function from a to the power set of a is like this, right? We use these symbols. So this means that there exists an injective function from a to the power set of a. However, we know that there is no bijective function from a to the power set of a. So we further can write this, right? This means that there exists an injective function from a to the power set of a, but there does not exist a bijective function from a to the power set of a. We might read this as saying the power set of a dominates a, and we might read this by saying the power set of a strictly dominates a. So this is essentially what we get out of this theorem, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.